So, in the previous segment, we uh, learned about the Samenon Kirchhoff model of uh, nonlinear elasticity. What I want to do in this segment is just put down a few more models uh, which will um, give us some idea of the range of uh, types of models available out there, right? In contrast with linear elasticity where there is a single quadratic model. Okay, so, um, so we'll just call this section, this segment uh, Right. Uh, further models of nonlinear. I guess I should make it clear that we are talking always about hyperelasticity here. Okay. Okay. So really, if we were to continue from the previous uh, segment, we had example one there for as the Samenon Kirchhoff. We have example two. Okay. So example two is the is the incompressible. Neo Hookian right the incompressible neo Hookian model. It's an exceedingly simple one, right? And um, it is one that is parameterized by or it can be parameterized in terms of uh, any of the tensors we've seen, but it's most commonly written as a function of the right cushy green stretch tensor okay it is the following it is one half two mu um, of course the half and two cancel out I'm just used to writing it in that fashion um, it's this uh, quantity mu times um, the trace of C minus 3. So this is the incompressible neo Hookian model and um, it works rather well for uh, materials such as polymers. Okay? Okay? And um, Something that I could have said in connection with the Savinon Kirchhoff model, but that is certainly applicable here too, is that this quantity mu that we have here is again the same Lame parameter that we had in the in the example as of the Savinon Kirchhoff model. Either in the context of that model or in the context of this model, mu is also understood to be the shear modulus. Okay. In the case of polymer, uh, in, in the case of polymer mechanics, mu can be related to the underlying structure of long chain molecules and so on. Right. So that that development can also be carried out. We we are not going to get into it here. Okay. So this is the incompressible neo Hookian. Uh, it can be extended to a compressible form. Okay, and that form is the following psi hat, also written as a function of C, is one fourth lambda, right? Now, this is our other Lamé parameter coming back. So, we have one fourth lambda, we have here the determinant of C minus one. Minus one half lambda over two plus mu natural log of 
determinant of C, okay, plus the term coming from the incompressible near Hookian, right, which is mu trace C minus 3, all right. The difference between the incompressible neo-Hookian and the compressible neo-Hookian is the fact that the incompressible neo-Hookian stores energy only in terms of deformations that when we consider in the linear elasticity in the limit of small strains would be considered to be shearing deformations, okay? So the incompressible uh, neo-Hookian has no component in there that models the effect of changing the volume of the material. Okay, that's why we call it the incompressible neo-Hookian. Okay, so I should include a comment here saying that uh, incompressible neo-Hookian does not have a, a contribution. from change in volume, okay? So when the incompressible Neohookian is actually implemented in models, it needs to be, you need to add on a constraint, okay, to ensure that the volume does not change, okay? However, however the compressible Neohookian does have such a term, right? The compressible Neo-Hookian includes volume change, right, through uh, all the determinant C terms, okay? Because remember, determinant C is just determinant of F, the whole square, okay? That's where the volume change comes in, all right? The third model we'll talk about is the so-called quadratic logarithmic model. And this is defined in terms of the principal stretches, okay? Uh, so the way we do it is to say, all right, let's recall the following, right? Remember our stretch tensor U, which admits the spectral decomposition. Correct, where lambda is, uh, the lambdas are the, are the principal values of the stretches or alternately the eigenvalues of U. And uh, and the NAs are the corresponding eigenvectors. Okay, so this model operates uh, in terms of those uh, eigenvalues, okay? And the model has the following form. You can view it as uh, being parameterized by U, all right? And it is written also involving the Lamé parameters. Here we have one half lambda times log of uh, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 square plus 
one half two mu times the log of lambda one square plus log of lambda two square plus log of lambda three square. Okay? That is the quadratic logarithmic model. Now, of course, with any one of these models, we can compute any of the stresses, right? So we just start out with uh, the with, uh, psi in whatever form we like, right? And because we know the transformations between this, between the stretch tensor U, uh, the right Cauchy green tensor C, or the, the Lagrange strain tensor E, we can always convert one model to any other form, right? We can always change these parametrizations. They're all frame invariant, okay? And for many of these, we have P equals partial of psi with respect to F. We have S equals partial of uh, any form we like with respect to E, right? And what we saw is we, we, what we we'd, uh, used when we computed the elastic tangent and the stress explicitly was we actually used psi equals psi hat of E. Okay? Once we have these, we have the other stresses as well. We then have tau, which is uh, S, F transpose, with an F here. Okay, and we have sigma, which is just one over determinant of f tau. Okay, all of these can be computed. All right. Also, we are able to compute um, the material elastic tangent. Right. We have c, which is the second derivative of uh, the second derivative of psi in whatever form we like, right, whatever parametrization we like, it's the second derivative. Okay? Now, if we have a model other than the salmonon kirchhoff model, what we are going to see is that this quantity C, the elasticity tangent, in general is nonlinear. Right? It's not just nonlinear, it, 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 it is nonlinear, it is also non constant. Okay? Right? It, this thing is non constant for all models other than Savinon Kirchhoff. Okay? It's really not that difficult to compute uh, the elasticity tangent for, um, I, should, I, should, I should say this clearly, right? It's the elasticity tangent. It's really not that difficult to compute the elasticity tangent for uh, the, uh, the Neohookian models, all right? There are, there are some steps which have to be worked out there, but it's, it's not that difficult to do. The quadratic logarithmic model takes a little more work. Okay, so we'll stop here for this segment then.